behind me is the Archaeum, Archaeological Museum of Early Jamestown History. It exhibits, explores both the excavations found in Jamestown and the State House, which it sits, the first building of government in North America. Now watch this. May 1607, there came two savages that seemed to be commanders bravely the rest. When over 100 men and boys from England landed on the shore of the James River in May 1607, they had a lasting effect on the modern world. The initial site of the colony called James Fort was long thought to have disappeared beneath the waters of the James River. Recent archaeology not only found James Fort, but also hundreds of thousands of artifacts that illustrate the beginnings of what became the United States of America. These are the first planters as listed by John Smith. The 13th day we came to our sitting place in past FIFA's country. Virginia, Earth's only paradise. Virginia looked like the Garden of Eden to the colonists who arrived in 1607. The land was fertile. There were numerous commercial possibilities and Virginia's Indians were friendly. The Powhatan are very witty and ingenious people up both to understand and speak our language. A quartz crystal arrow point as clear as glass made by Virginia Indians. A silver sixpence with the bass of English King James I, one of the most powerful monarchs in Europe. These objects symbolize the two cultures that met on the banks of the James River in 1607. Each of these artifacts was valued by its respective culture as an object of exchange. The point was treasured by the Indians not only for its beauty, but for hunting food. The coin was worth its weight in silver to the English and could be used to buy food, except in Virginia. Each culture tentatively adapted the ways of the other. Virginia Indians accepted a type of currency, beads and copper, from the colonies for food in the colonies. Learned to live off a land very different from the orderly fields of England. In time, each fell back to many of their traditional ways Yet encounters between the colonists and the Virginia Indians changed both cultures forever. They have fortified themselves and built a small town which they call Jamestown. Artifacts lighting the way through history. Bill Iron made in England, early 17th century. Dagger blade iron made in Scotland around 1610. Saucer candlestick lead glaze earthenware made on the Surrey Hampshire border, England, early 17th century. Bardman Jags salt glazed stone were made in French and Germany early 17th century. Wine bottle glass made in England around 1680 to 1700. 
apothecary jar, tea glazed earthenware made in the Netherlands early 17th century. Dish tea glazed earthenware made in the Netherlands early 17th century. Marbles sleepwear bowl laid glazed earthenware made in Pisa, Italy around 1625 to 1650. Stirrup iron made in England mid 17th century. Stirrup iron made in England late 17th century. Box turtle carpaces bone Virginia and diamond back therapine carpace bone Virginia. Crossing the Atlantic. Following a route to the Americas similar to that of Columbus, the first colonists arrived in Virginia after a voyage lasting five months. Some other artifacts, archaeologists unearthed in Jamestown. Butter pot lead glaze earthenware made in England early 17th century. Butter pot lead glaze earthenware made in England early 17th century. Baluster jar lead glaze earthenware made in England early 17th century. Compass iron made early 17th century. Perspective glass glass early 17th century. Mermaid Mount Copper Alloy, early 17th century. Coral from the West Indies, early 17th century. Olive jar earthenware made in Seville, Spain, early 17th century. On the side from the West Indies, early 17th century. The Virginia Company. King James I granted a charter in April 1606 to the Virginia Company for exploration, trade, and settlement in Virginia, an area of North America that today stretches from Maine to North Carolina. Headquartered in London, the Virginia Company consisted of gentlemen, nobles, and merchants who hoped the colony would provide financial gain for them as well as for England. Because Jamestown was both a business enterprise and a military venture, a significant percentage of the first colonists were well-trained and expert soldiers. The frontier colony needed a military men to protect against the actuality of Indian assaults and the possibility of Spanish attack. An archaeologist began removing the centuries of dirt from the site in 1994. They quickly realized they were uncovering the remains of James Fort. Not only did the stains in the ground match the wooden defensive walls described by the colonists, but also the objects found indicated that James Fort had been found. There were hundreds of artifacts dating to the late 16th and early 17th centuries, and most were military. The fort is called in honor of His Majesty's name, Jamestown. Entrenching coal iron around 1610 broad axe iron, felling axes. Iron hot or small splitting axe iron around 1610. Flask earthenware made in Martin Camp, France around 1610. Bill hook iron around 1610. Spade nosings or iron early 17th century. Wedges iron adds iron 17th century. Compass iron 17th century. Plumber lead 1610. Socket chisel iron 1610. Gouge iron 17th century. Augers iron. Gorger for neck protection, cover set, helmet, cheek pieces, breastplate, gusset for underarm, basket, heel to lowland, Scottish sword, scabbard shape and locket, rapier blade, sword pommels including this pommel to lowland, Scottish sword, dagger, pommel and hilts, dagger for the left hand, sword, belt, hangers, boarding, pike heads, trigger guards, Match lock, lock plates, musket rest, warp and scours for cleaning the gun barrel. 
bullet maids, bundler cylinders, powder plus nozzles. Forensic analysis detailed the tooth injury and bone loss due to infection. The two cell hormones were incisors were damaged the right chip and the left broken in half with the pop chamber exposed the tooth quickly died if the boy had received proper care and the tooth was extracted this body would have been a deep question if the major infection may have been a contributing factor to his death so this is the forensic sculpting of the early colonies after his skull and bones were dug he here in Jamestown. The unmarked grave was found by archaeologists while uncovering the West Palisade of 1607 James Fort. It was part of a more extensive burial ground of over 30 individuals established during the first year of settlement. The extended English where it was parallel to the policy, suggesting it was contemporary with the fort's western wall. Men with medical training were essential for the new colony. In the first year alone, nine men representing the three major healing professions in the early 17th century arrived at Jamestown. Here, there's a saying, we are starved, we are starved. So the early colonists, because of starvation, after the Powhatan Indian hide their food, did not provide food for them, some of them became cannibals based on this archaeological evidence. There was a time which still to this day we call the starving time it were too mild to stay and scarce to believe what we endured. John Smith, 1610. Inadequate provisions, the loss of key leadership, wreck on Bermuda, and the beginning of full-scale war with the Powhatans created the conditions for mass starvation at Jamestown during the terrible winter of 1609 to 1610. Now all of us at Jamestown begins to feel the sharp prick of hunger, a war that miseries ensued. George Perret. There were Englishmen left in a foreign country in such a misery as we were in this new discovered Virginia. The people of Jamestown, who landed on Jamestown shores after 1607. Mostly English Jamestown colonists had diverse social backgrounds from wealthy aristocracy to poor and skilled laborers. Some intended to stay for good, some for just a short term. Shan have no option to leave. Most came willingly to join family members or in search of economic opportunity. Others forced from their homeland arrive against their will. Archaeology offers insight into the lives of rich and poor, known and unknown, willing and coerced. Close Bourgogne helmet, Dutch iron, 1600. So these are the gentlemen soldiers. They have nice and flashy, fabulous clothes or dress, captains and commanders. Over the past 25 years, James Hunter discovered archaeologists excavating James for period features between 1607 and 1624 have unearthed significant numbers of elite objects related to the first gentlemen soldiers. They brought their own armor, swords, rappers, daggers, poniards, and pistols of much better quality than that for ordinary soldiers provided by the Virginia Company. These were personal weapons and indicated their social and military rank as well as previous experience. Buckler, Boss, Iron Made in Wales or England, 1550 to 1575. 
the recovering shot iron made in England early 17th century. So these are some of the tools they use as weapons. The colonists built James Port in the form of a triangle with semicircular bulwarks like a half moon at each of the three angles. Bulwarks contained raised platforms where the artillery could defend the fort. The cannon fired a solid iron ball known as shot. Since the non-exploding shot will be of little help against Virginia Indian attacks, the cannon replaced the fire law and low over the river, thereby protecting the fort from approaching enemy ships. Some island that is strong by nature, the Virginia Company, 1606. So this is Jamestown Island. On April 26, 1607, the English landed at Cape Henry at the entrance to the Chesapeake Bay. The Virginia Company had instructed them to settle a hundred miles from the river's mouth as a location that could be easily defended from Spanish attack. In addition, the company insisted that their settlement should not interfere with any Indian town so as not to offend the naturals. Some of the colonies called gentlemen and adventurers. Some captains who served in Virginia began life as relatively humble men who had been elevated to officer status earlier in their military service, but the majority were well-connected gentlemen, even including a few younger sons of aristocracy, who had fought in the Netherlands and Ireland in the last years of the 16th and opening years of the 17th century. So these are Jamestown Tag lead led early 17th century. During the first two decades of the colony, Virginia was governed by captains and commanders whose experience on the battlefields of Europe prepared them for the combat and hardship in America. Captains usually commanded from 50 to 100 soldiers overseeing their daily work and training as well as maintaining this discipline. They were also responsible for the men's moral welfare and enforcement of strict religious observance according to the tenets of the Church of England. So they look like this. Some of the old paintings in the other museums look like them. Influence and industry, tobacco pies of Robert Cotton. This works to make return of present profit. So these are the prominent men. Sir Walter Raleigh, Southampton, Charles Howard, Delaware, Robert Cecil. So these nine pipes bear names of some of the most influential men in England, locally made by Robert Cotton of Virginia Clay. They represent a distinguished group of courtiers, investors, and adventurers. These are some pipes used for tobacco making and industry. Cotton, a member of the Stationers Company, arrived at Jamestown by April 1608. He was one of the almost 300 settlers sent by the Virginia Company of London by the end of that year. Half were gentlemen and soldiers, while the remainder were artisans, laborers, and tradesmen, sent to exploit the natural resources of the New World for profit. So these are the other artifacts unearthed here in Jamestown. So the tradesmen, the artisans, and the skilled laborers were jeweler, glassmakers that produced these artifacts, metallurgies, carpenters, bricklayers, coppersmith, cop blacksmith, mason, tailors, Leather worker and Cooper. Even botanist. The factory, just as footprints can lead to the identity of a crime suspect, clues left in the soil can identify the design and function of long banished buildings. One building footprint found along the edge of the 1608 expansion of the original fort provides evidence of a long multi purpose structure. This was likely the factory, a place where the day to day bustle of trade and commerce drew in colonists and Virginia Indians alike. So this is a picture of Papuhatan, 
like an indigenous American Indian. Okay, some of the artifacts again dug here. The world of Pocahontas on Earth. When Pocahontas was born in the waning years of the 16th century, the world of her people, the Powhatans, was about to change in ways that even her father, Chief Powhatan, could not oversee. Virginia Indians valued copper as a symbol of social and spiritual status, and they built sophisticated trade networks to acquire it. Before the English arrived, the Powhatans obtained copper from outside chiefdom, a potential cause of conflict. So some of the artifacts here. So these are the artifacts made by Powhatan Indians. So this is the old map of the Powhatan territory. Virginia Indian men were well-documented visitors to Jamesport, with some reported to have lived among the colonies. Aside from Pocahontas, Virginia Indian women were scarcely mentioned in association with the English settlement, but their presence has been confirmed through the archaeological record. So these are some of the Powhatan artifacts found here in Jamestown. The arrival of over 100 Englishmen and boys at the center of the Powhatans were in 1607 triggered a series of dramatic cultural interactions that would change the lives of Virginia Indians and colonists forever. Pocahontas, to whom my heart and vessels are, and have a long time been so entangled and enthralled in so intricate a labyrinth. John Rolfe, 1614. On April 5, 1614, Pocahontas and John Rolfe were married. This union of an English gentleman and the favored daughter of Pohata formally ended the hostilities between the two peoples that had begun almost five years earlier. So that's John's role. Isn't he handsome? Okay. Objects found by archaeologists have many stories to tell about who made them and why, but the stories are not always easy to decipher, especially on a site like Jamesport, where there was a complex cultural exchange between English and native peoples. So this is a monahakon, a dagger, a pohatan dagger, a porous, a bullet bug, okay, a pelvis, and that is a cow pelvis, a turtle, glass bead, and hammer stone. Virginia Indians have inhabited the Chesapeake region for thousands of years. Today, the Commonwealth of Virginia recognizes 11 Indian tribes, of which eight also have federal recognition. The majority of the tribes were once associated with the great Powhatan paramount chiefdom, Chenacomaca, which by 1600 was the most powerful and populous chiefdom along the mid-Atlantic coast. So these are the present-day Powhatans. That is the James River Banks outside the museum. Jamestown has no fresh water springs serving the town, but what we drew from a well six or seven pots from deep fed by the brackish river oozing into it. Written messages from the past really survive in archaeological context because paper deteriorates into soil. Slate and more enduring material was also used as writing surface and slate tablet with inscriptions on both sides was found in the first press of words, numbers, symbols, drawings of people, plants, and animals had been scratched onto the tablet. So these are some of the artifacts also found here in Powhatan territory. There were also coins and beads used for trade exchange. and the Powhatans and the colonists were influenced by the Church of England. The establishment of the Church of England, Anglicanism in Virginia was fundamental to the transfer of English culture and beliefs to the New World. In the context of the religious conflict in the 16th and 17th century Europe, 
Virginia was seen as the beachhead of an English empire in North America that, that would form a powerful Protestant bulwark against Spain's huge Catholic empire to the south. So these are the archaeologists who dug some of the early colonies who were buried here in Jamestown. So these are the first houses that they found underneath the soil, the ground here in historic Jamestown. House sites and household goods found in the fort give some indication of what the buildings were like inside and out. Most of the men appeared to have lived in crowded barracks-like conditions. Some of the gentlemen had the privacy of their own dwellings, even though a rudimentary pit house or tent. So these are what the structures of buildings look like here in Jamestown, as reconstructed by Jamestown Rediscovery Archaeologists. The Indians also made tools out of animals, as you can see here. So these are evidence that there's a culture thriving here in Jamestown. Of Powhatan Indian origins. So archaeologists reconstructed the buildings that were built in Jamestown by the early colonies with their interaction with the early American Indians. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm wrapping it up. Yeah, we're closing. I'm wrapping up. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going now. Behind me is the James River. Thank you for my more than 2,000 subscribers for watching my vlogs. Keep watching for more vlogs. Greetings from historic Jamestown here in Williamsburg, Virginia. This is Andrew Lewis TV. YOLO, you only live once.